of the end, then you measure now. Dear journalists, thank you for coming to this press conference that is uh, devoted to the informal uh, meeting of the ministers of the agriculture. And first, uh, we will have uh, introductory speeches given by the agriculture ministers of uh, Minister of, of uh, Latvia, Janis Doklavs, also Phils Hogans, the commissioner responsible for for agriculture, and Cheslav Adam Sekerski, who is uh, agri, -com uh, agri committee's uh, head in the European Parliament. Then you will be ha have an opportunity to ask questions. First of all, uh, Janis Doklovs, the Minister of Agriculture of Latvia. Thank you. Uh, dear uh, head of the committee, commissioner, journalist, ladies and gentlemen, together with ministers of all other countries, we just finished the discussion on current status of organic farming and future developments of organic farming in the EU. Together with ministers, we discussed which of the existing policy instruments have been successful in addressing the challenges of organic farming and what future policy instruments they would like to have. Uh, these are different tools uh, related to organic farming control system, rural support programs, and research and development. The ministers also discussed how to increase consumer trust in organic produce. The participants of the meeting stress the importance of reproductive material of flora and fauna in production of organic uh, produce. We have also discussed the necessary changes in uh, regulations to ensure level playing field between producers of the European Union and the third countries. We also touched upon the draft regulation of organic farming. Uh, the Council has been working on the uh, proposal already for three presidencies. The proposal is technically difficult, and our goal was to come up with a clear position on the, uh, of the Council so that we can start trialogue with the European uh, Parliament. The ministers shared their views on the proposal. It was very important for the presidency to receive information from the ministers to see how flexible they are able to be to accept the compromise proposed by the presidency. It was also necessary to find out what needs to be improved to make sure that the compromise is accepted by the member states on the 16th of June. I have received several good points from the ministers here in Riga, and I truly hope that we will be able to reach an agreement on the 16th of June in Luxembourg during the official council meeting, and it will be during our presidency. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Minister. And now, the Phil Hocken, the Commissioner. Thank you very much, and I wish to thank the Latvian Presidency uh, for the hospitality that we have received here in Riga, and to thank you, uh, Janis, uh, for your excellent chairman, chairmanship of the meeting today and, indeed, the organization of the various events. Today's discussion, as you're aware, was focused on a presidency paper which uh, outlines the importance of the organic sector, uh, the confidence that we can express in the future of the organic sector and the potential for growth and jobs in the sector. Uh, and I certainly uh, welcome this newfound focus uh, in the organic sector and the contribution that it will make inevitably with the growth that we've seen uh, over the last number of years and the continuing growth in the future of an average of 9% across the European Union. Uh, I also welcome the focus today on the need to ensure public and consumer confidence in the organic sector. And this is one of the key priorities of the Commission regulation. Uh, of course, a number of ministers uh, spoke of the discussions that are ongoing in relation to the organic proposal. And I was uh, hopeful that we would see uh, some positive uh, 
noises being made by ministers in relation to these proposals during the course of the meeting, and they were certainly encouraged uh, by the positive tone of many of the interventions and the apparent willingness now uh, to reach agreement uh, on the, by the Council uh, as part of the general approach to this file on the 16th of June in Luxembourg. So I want to thank the Latvian Presidency for facilitating uh, this sense of positiveness now that we see today, and hopefully it will find its way into a, a successful conclusion in Luxembourg. Thank you. Paldies, Komisaram Filon Hoganam. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, I should like to give the floor to the Chair of the Agri Committee from the European Parliament, Mr. Sakirsky. I will give you two short texts. First, it is my speech given at the Informal Council of Agriculture Ministers that has just finished this meeting. It is a very short text, and I think that he explained our point of view, point of view from the Agri Committee. Second, uh, text it is a possible future timetable of work of the European Parliament on a regulation on organic farming that has been proposed by the European Commission. I will, I will also be happy to answer for any other question you have, may have. Uh, but I am open, but sorry, but I will participate only 10 minutes because I have played, uh, because our meeting uh, a little longer. I'm waiting. Thank you. Now you have the opportunity to ask questions, please. Hi, hello, Ed Bray from Agrifax, uh, based in Brussels. Uh, it seems that the um, outstanding stumbling block now on getting uh, a common position among the ministers on the organic reform is this issue of uh, a threshold um, which would uh, trigger the automatic decertification of an organic, an organic product. Uh, are you closer now to a deal after these talks among the ministers Firstly, and and secondly, wh what do you see now as the compromise on this issue? Is this something that you're just going to come back to at a later stage? Is the Commission going to look at, uh, at this in a report? Uh, how, how are you going to overcome this split? Thanks. Well, Ed, um, certainly there are a number of issues, as you know, from the last council are still outstanding. Uh, one of them is thresholds, and uh, the other is controls, and equivalence in relation to imports is, a, is another issue. So those matters have been uh, discussed uh, in the context of the presidency seeking to bring about uh, a, a compromise in some of those areas, but these matters are not yet concluded. So I, I think the, I, I leave it to the presidency to comment, but I, I think that we are heading in a, a we, we understand the landing zone for some of those issues at this stage from many of the delegations that are expressing concern. And I know that uh, uh, President Janus uh, certainly will be tabling new proposals perhaps as early as Friday uh, for the SEA uh, and indeed certainly for the 16th of June in order to overcome those concerns. Thank you. I should first like to ask you to put your questions to Mr. Sikirsky because he has to leave. He has a plane to catch. The whole regulation raises a number of questions in many areas. There's also a lot of interest in it from many non-governmental organizations. This is related to the issue of maintaining the rules, especially when it comes to uniform standards in what is becoming a, a fragmenting and, ra and developing market. That raises a, a lot of questions. But I guess that the proposals that we're working on in our agri-committee in the EP 
will be a compromise that will finally be accepted. This is a very sensitive area. And despite lengthy discussions, not everything has been uh, worked out. That's why uh, it takes longer for us to complete this. There was even a proposal to withdraw this document altogether. Luckily, this hasn't been done, and I'd like to thank Commissioner Hogan for this, because after all, this is an important area which requires further work because these legislative arrangements are very much needed for this sector. Thank you. Paldies. Thank you. Are there questions addressed to Mr. Sikorsky? It seems that it's not the case. Thank you, Mr. Sikorsky. Any further questions? But please introduce yourself and mention the media you represent. With the microphone, please. In this case, I'm representing uh, the Spanish news agency EFI, um, and uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'll pose my uh, question in Latvian to ease the uh, because it's Mr. Duklaus. Uh, Mr. Dukla, what do you think? Are you going to come out with a new compromise proposal for by Friday as regards the threshold? for the residues. Is there any grounds for your optimism to reach an agreement on the 16th of June? A proposal that, that will justify his optimism that everything will move ahead on, on the 16th uh, the, regarding the threshold issue, which seems to be holding everything up. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes, we still haven't lost our optimism, in particular after yesterday's and today's discussions, because I think that's the value of meeting each other informally, that you feel free to discuss not only with the ministers, but also with their advisors, their colleagues, who are dealing with this matter on a daily basis. And I have some ground for my optimism. It's because that also today in the plenary, I didn't hear any minister saying a categoric no, no further discussions. We will stick to our position. That didn't happen. All ministers said that um, we need to find a compromise, and they are ready to work towards a compromise. And as Commissioner just said, I too believe that we are very close to reaching an agreement on the general approach in the Council. And I believe that you all understand very well that this is just one step towards the final successful outcome, because we still face negotiations in the trilogue. And I assume that also all of my colleagues realize that agreeing on the general approach, we will just make one step forward. And the next phase is the negotiations in the trilogue. I would also like to express my appreciation to the commission, to the commissioner personally. They too are willing to compromise. So there are grounds for my optimism. Thank you. Certainly, uh, I want to confirm and concur with uh, what the President has just said, that there is grounds for optimism that we can reach agreement on the 16th of uh, June, but the Commission proposals are well known. They're out there. It's not a matter for the Commission to make propo further proposals. It's a matter for the, the Presidency to make those particular proposals, and I expect that they will be doing some changes to the present text uh, in the context of reaching agreement on the 16th of June. The principles of consumer trust in the organic sector, harmonisation and standardisation of the rules, uh, a level playing pitch for European producers vis-à-vis -vis 
importers, uh, our imports of, uh, from third countries, all of these principles are still in place as far as the Commission are concerned. Uh, and I know that the uh, report from Mr. Housling from the European Parliament now that we're aware of uh, in the last uh, week uh, has certainly cl given clearer indications politically about where we stand in relation to a successful outcome. But as the, the President has said, 16th of June is just one step, but hopefully it's a good step uh, for the Council of Agricultural Ministers, and then we will be in a position to hopefully uh, engage with the European Parliament once they have concluded their work in, in July or September. Thank you. Other questions, please? Just to follow up question on, on the threshold again, is this something that you're going to have to take out of of the of the report that you'll be putting down for the for the next meeting, given given the opposition? Is this something you think that ministers should just come back to because it's too difficult uh, to get an agreement on it? I think as you're asking us to finalise the, the negotiations today, we won't be able to do that until the 16th of June. So, uh, you know, we can't give you the outcome of a meeting that hasn't been held yet in relation to various matters that are still the subject of discussions. Uh, but as we said earlier, the issue of thresholds uh, and the issues of uh, controls and uh, the levelling of the playing pitch, as it were, in terms of imports from third countries, all of these matters are still the subject of a discussion. But we have a clearer picture now of what the, the type of proposals that the presidency can bring forward. Uh, that will help to meet the concerns of some of those countries that have expressed those concerns, concerns at the last meeting. Thank you very much. And I would like to add to what the Commissioner said, because I as understood you were interested in the Presidency's proposal. Uh, today at this press conference, we also have our main presidency negotiator, Mr. Lopinch. And I would like to reassure you that we, as a presidency, are not going to take some elements out or add to the proposal such elements about which we know that nobody will support them. So on the 5th of June, the Special Committee for Agriculture will meet. And then that will be the next step for discussing our proposal. And after that meeting, we'll be able to see if we succeeded or not. Thank you. Any further questions? There were 31 uh, pesticides uh, about to be prohibited. And uh, now suddenly the proposal is drawn back. What happened? I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. In the Guardian, there were 31 pesticides. They uh, <coughs> were planned to be prohibited by the European Union. And now the EU has cancelled this. Uh, because of the U.S. is threatening to make problems with uh, TTIP. What's true or wrong about that? I'm certainly not aware of any particular proposal like that, but it is a matter for my colleague, Commissioner Andrew Kaisis, this particular proposal. So, if, you know, we, you may address your matter to Sante if that's a, that is a proposal. But I, having been in the United States recently, that, uh, as recently as 10 days ago, that's, that matter wasn't raised with me, so maybe you can ask the Guardian. Have you been uh, negotiating about TTIP over there? Oh, I have, yes. Um, That's my responsibility. Okay. Uh, I read another thing in The Guardian as well. You're, you're doing a lot of reading in The Guardian. Yeah, it, it's, it's great. I can recommend. Um, the, the United States, uh, they voted in favour of the establishment of a, a Trade Promotion Authority, and um, those senators got paid more than one million U.S. dollars for their votes by multinationals. Now, is my question: Is it possible to do business with a regime that is as corrupted as the FIFA? 
You can ask the United States of, uh, press office about all of those details, but we will be very pleased to have a comprehensive agreement with the United States of America in due course. But it's, a, it's a, certainly a big gap between the European Union and the United States of America at the moment. Thank you. Any further questions? If that's not the case, we can conclude the press conference. Thank you.